So sometimes in life you gotta take the L. And yesterday I took an L. And that happened. Uh, headlight and a front bumper. That sucks. And welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome back to a new video where today I am going to confirm every single troll's past comment where they've accused me of being an idiot and a dummy for whatever I was saying on one of my videos and they're actually right. It was 100% correct that I am an idiot because I crashed my Dodge. It was my fault. I drove my car into the side of another car and I regret it. I'm embarrassed by it and I own my screw up. It's been probably 10 years since I had any fender bender. The last one was a shopping cart that literally rolled out the middle of the street in the winds and hit the front of my Audi and I was found not at fault for that one. Nonetheless, it still sucked. This one, I am 100% at fault. Insurance company was nice enough to confirm that the next day when they sent me that email and I expect my rates will go through the ceiling because I have to pay for her car, her car, her, his, that car, my car, all these cars and all the insurance that comes with them which tops about 15,000 years of stands. It'll probably get worse. <laughs> But first, we're gonna jump in the Dodge, we're gonna do a quick cold start, and we're gonna talk about how paying markups can really, really screw you, something many people have not thought about, that I think it's important to consider before you make that decision, because there's almost literally no way for you to protect yourself. But now, let's start this thing up, jump in, and have a conversation. And then we'll reveal the repair, and how beautiful it looks now. Doesn't that sound good? It's good to have her back. It really is good to have her back. Driving the Camry for a week and then jumping into this thing was such a night and day, night and day shift. It made me really appreciate how much I love this car. All right, let's get this video started. All right, so before we get into the actual topic, I know you all want to know what happened. I know you're curious because you don't want it to happen to you. That's why, that's why you want to know. And that's okay, I'll tell you even though I really don't like reliving the experience. But nonetheless, I got up extra early the other morning and it was extremely windy the night before. And we have the umbrellas and the lounge chairs and all that stuff around the pool. So I go out there while I'm letting the dog go to the bathroom and I'm putting everything down outside, tying everything down, because once a cushion gets into a pool, I don't know about you all, but it's like dragging a body out. I mean, it fills up with the water, it's gonna be huge. So I'm thinking, I gotta get this solved. I also have a 7.30 call I've gotta be on with the Midwest people, and I've, it's just too much happening all at once. My daughter's upstairs trying to get ready for school. There's just too much happening, and I run to the car late for my call to run to Chick-fil-A to grab my egg white grill, which I have every single morning, and my amazing Diet Coke, which likely is shortening my lifespan, which it's well worth it in the end. And I pull up to a stop sign and literally look down to get my heater going because it's freaking cold with all the wind and everything else. And I just started to proceed before looking up. And before I could see what I did, I hit the most incredibly camouflaged Toyota Camry in the world, camouflaged by my own stupidity, and I tagged the side of a car. When the insurance investigator asked me how fast I was going, I said one. And she says, one what? One mile an hour. I hit her doing one mile an hour at the very most. My tires were just barely rolling. She was going through the four-way stop, and I tagged her. In all honesty, when it happened, I literally didn't know what the hell was going on because it came out of nowhere. Um, in hindsight, in hearing her side of the story, it made all the sense in the world that I just, I just effed up and I hit her car. And I'll put a picture up, you can see how that came out. So both, both were minor damage to our cars, um, but nonetheless, cars are not what they used to be. So they fold up really easily. So my front cap and headlight and grill and some cross support thing and a little vent or whatever, whatever it was, it came out to like, 3,000 something bucks. I'll share with you that in a second at the end of the video, but um, nonetheless, her car, I don't know, but here's what's really fun. Um, when I got out of the car and I talked to her, I apologized. I mean, I was, I felt bad. Um, I didn't know exactly what happened at the time, but um, I told her, I'll pay for everything. I'll stroke the check. I'll show up with $100 bills. Whatever you need, I'm gonna make, make it good. Don't worry about that. But here's my insurance, just in case I'm lying to you because I want you to feel good about this. But do me a favor, don't go to them, just go get an estimate from somebody you're happy with. I don't even need you to get three of them. Just be honest with me and let me know how much it's gonna cost to fix. 
And she said, okay. If you want, we'll get an estimate, and then we'll, you know, fix auto, and then it's cheap. Man, I'm just like, check this color fix, you know what I mean? So, uh, I'm going to have to get a rental car. I have my camera, I have the same exact car. <laughs> okay. And, uh, we'll get it fixed. So, I live right here, so you can find my car in my driveway. Can't miss it. <laughs> All right, thanks. She was cool with it. Before I made it to Chick-fil-A, which is about an eight minute drive, I got an email from my insurance company, claim reported, and when I called them, they said, well, it's already been reported, so we still have to investigate it, uh, because I did something. I did something bad, apparently. And I didn't push any further at that point, because at that point, I'm just like, whatever. You know, maybe I can talk them out of doing the claim. I don't even know, but just so much happening at the time. I was just like, whatever. We'll just get it fixed. I haven't had an accident in a very long time, but with a 16-year-old driver on my insurance and Lindsay Lohan as a wife who has slightly more challenged driving record and my perfect driving record, I'm paying a lot of money. So currently for all my cars, all five cars right now, it's about 15,000 a year. I expect that to increase, which is ridiculous when you all think about it because that is over $1,000 a month. No, I don't pay it monthly. I plan to pay it upfront, at least for my six month policy at a time. That way, that way I don't have to swallow this incredibly crazy 1100 and something dollar insurance. So that's just a little insight into my life, my screw up, and you know, hopefully, hopefully it never happens to any of you. And you know what, I'm human, and yes, some of you in the comments who have beat on me over the, the last few years, you get to gloat in this one, but here's the deal, I am not perfect. Like I told my wife, if your expectation of me is perfection, we will have a horrible relationship because I will never rise to that level that you would expect. And she says, no, nah, I don't expect that. You're a guy, I expect you to be flawed. So guess what, everybody? I'm admitting to all of you that I am flawed. I'm not right about everything, and in this situation, I was wrong. And I, thank goodness, I'm in a position to be able to afford to absorb this horrible, stupid move and just push through it, but it just sucks. So be careful out there, everybody. Pay attention. Pay attention. I tell my daughter, pay attention. I've been giving her lectures for weeks about driving, and then I am the one that goes out and crashes. So that's what happened. Now let's talk about these markups and the issue that you all will have if you pay the markup. All right, real quick, let me interrupt this video and tell you about a new relationship that I'm working on growing because from the core principles that I believe in, which is integrity, I am not going to take money from a sponsor on a product that I have not used and don't believe in, and in this situation, nor will I take it, take money from a sponsor that I have yet to have delivered any results for. One, I believe in this product, NextGen. Two, I believe in the owner, Michael. And for months and months now, I've been using the NextGen cleaning products on my cars before ever having a relationship with them. And I shared this with Michael, the owner, the other day, and he says, we should do some business. And I said, look, watch. My channel's not big enough for me to start charging you a bunch of money, nor would I even ask you for that. But I believe in your product tremendously, so why don't we do this? Why don't I see if my subscribers, my followers on YouTube and Instagram would like to try your product, buy your product, we'll give them a discount, and if lots of them buy the stuff, then let's sit down at the table, put together a relationship that works for both of us, and include my daughter in that conversation and help sponsor her Supra over time. He says, that's great. Usually, all you guys want money up front. I don't want any money up front. I already have your product. And he says, well, I'm gonna give you some more. So he gave me a few bottles of his product for samples. Some of the stuff I have yet to have used yet. A lot of it I've already used, and it's how I keep my cars clean before, during, and after every single car meet and everywhere I go in all these ridiculously crazy cars. My Dodge is right behind the Land Rover. So let me tell you real quick about this product. So. This is Next Gen cleaning products. This is his wet look tire shine. He also has the non-wet look the ceramic spray, which is amazing. And we're gonna use that on my daughter's wrap on her pink Supra back there, as well as on my Lamborghini, which is PPF in the whole front. We're also, this is where I started with his company, which was the glass cleaner. I cannot clean a windshield. It's just something I can't do. But I found out part of the issue was not just me, but it was Windex. The Windex does not work. It leaves streaks. I can never get it clean. And let me tell you, driving at night on these 
rallies with my friends and not being able to see out your windshield is terrifying and I've had it happen several times. It's no fun. Once I started using this stuff, the glass cleaner from next gen, no more streaks, super clean window and easy, simple. I mean, just a couple minutes and your windshield is spotless and crystal clear. The interior ceramic, which for sure I'm going to use in the Lamborghini to keep that interior like new because it still is beautiful and amazing. But this is an old, old car, 16 years old, and I want to make sure the interior stays nice. And then the ceramic soap. So these are great products. This is the one I probably use the most, which is probably my third or fourth bottle, waterless wash. And I use this before, during, and after. It's just, it's a go-to product, and I love this stuff. The glass cleaner is a godsend. So here's the deal. Go to getnextgen.com, getnextgen.com, and use promo code MOTIVATOR10 and get 10% off anything you buy on that site. Try this stuff out. He will track how many of you actually buy it, and then him and I will have a meeting in a few weeks, and we'll see if it makes sense for us to establish a business relationship. If not, what I told him, I'm still going to use his product. I love his product. It's great stuff. It's incredible. I haven't found anything better. So whether we do business or not, I appreciate him. He gave us a hat and a couple shirts and a few extra bottles. So here we are. So if you need a good cleaner for your car and something to preserve your interior and make your tires look incredible and clean your windshields easily quick and be able to see perfectly out of them then go to getnextgen.com use motivator 10 get 10 percent off and help us earn our first sponsor now let's get back to the video and i share this with you not just to beat up on the dealers i know i've been beating up the dealers so i'm going to pull up my notes here and yes, the dealers deserve some beatings and the customers who are paying these markups deserve some beatings online. But in the end, you're going to do what you're going to do. And if you can afford to do it, as I've said before, more power to you. Get your Hellcat. Knock yourself out. I will tell you right now that I would bet by July, August, you're going to be able to get a car for less money. Um, the way interest rates are right now, the way the current economy is right now, the way all the economic challenges that are mounting layoffs. I mean, I'm at the epicenter of what generally will bring down the economy, which is the real estate, real estate we own. And I'll tell you right now, it is struggling in a huge way, and that will slow everything down, I promise you. But no matter how you cut it, there's going to be better deals out there, and there are videos everywhere. Go watch Lucky Lopez's channel. He's a car dealership, and he's saying, this is what's happening. Cars are not selling. CarMax is having trouble selling used cars. I'm telling you, new cars are going to be sitting on the lot a lot longer. There is a lot more cars on lots, so you will get a better deal then. But if you have to pay this markup, if you absolutely have to be the first one with this car, because you believe you're going to, to capitalize on this incredible opportunity to buy a last call car that's going to skyrocket in value over time, I've shared over and over in the past why I don't believe that's gonna happen is one, you're not the only person with that idea, but here's the challenge, okay? Whether it was a demon or whether it's one of these last call, Dodge Chargers or Challengers, here's the big problem you're gonna have, is one, most of the banks, if not all of the banks, either already are or will not finance that markup. Doesn't matter, you roll in with an 850 FICO score, that bank's not gonna do it. What they might do is about 100 to 110% of MSRP. That's what you might be able to get out of them. Anything more than that, good luck. And usually the reason why they'll do 110% is to cover tax and license. So someone with really good credit can literally sign their name and drive away in a brand new car and not have to come out with any money. Now those people, which I've been those people before, should not think that they're going to be okay if they get in a car accident and their insurance company has to total that car and pay them off. Here's why. If they owe 110% of MSRP on that car and they crash that car, let's say they owe 60,000 on it and the insurance company finds that that car is worth $55,000, that's all they're going to give you. So you're going to have a $5,000 problem on your hands to be able to pay your bank off for that car and they're going to want that money pretty quickly. Yes, there's a solution to this and it's called gap insurance. And what gap insurance is, is guaranteed asset protection insurance. And what it is, is it's insurance that will cover the difference between what the insurance company gives you for your car and the loan balance. This is very important to understand what I'm saying here. The loan balance, not what you paid for the car. So keep in mind, if you paid a $25,000 
markup, $10,000 markup, $50,000 markup on top of MSRP on that car, you might get, I don't know, let's just say it's a $60,000 car. Let's just, let's use a Hellcat for example. Um, $95,000 car and now you're into this thing for $145,000 the insurance company might give you $90,000 for that car you're gonna be short like five grand you have tax and license on top of that $145,000 car which by the way is going to kill you because you're paying almost 50% of the value on that car in markup alone so now you're gonna be paying another $15,000 in tax and license if you're in a state like California if you're in a state that doesn't you know, do the math for your own state. And now you're into this thing for $165,000 and you get it stolen or you get the car totaled. And now the insurance company comes to you and says, well, we're going to give you 90. We're going to give you 90 grand for the car. And tough luck. You're going to say, but I'm into it for $150,000, $155,000. Because look, I paid this markup. And the insurance company is going to say, we don't care. That's not what the car is worth. You did that. Now you could say, well, all to, to replace this car, all the dealers are doing that. You would be lying right now because they don't all do that. And they're gonna find out that not every dealership's doing that. Some are doing 10,000, some are doing 5,000. And frankly, the car isn't, isn't gonna be worth more than MSRP unless it was a collectible antique car and that car has appreciated over time and to replace that car would mean based on comparable cars on the market, you're gonna have to pay that much money. You're not gonna get that money out. I, I'm just telling you the insurance company is not gonna, call your insurance company, ask them. And I, I will tell you right now, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I believe wholeheartedly they're gonna tell you, you're done. You're, you're gonna take that 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 loss. Now, if you do get a bank, that will finance the markups and you can put very little down and you end up totaling that car, the gap insurance most likely will cover the difference between what the insurance company is going to pay and what you owe in a loan balance on that car. So that would mean you have to finance all that extra money at today's higher interest rates. Also keep in mind, you don't have to buy gap insurance from the dealership, which is usually marked up as well and some of the dealers may, not saying they are gonna do this, may lie to you and tell you that the gap insurance will cover that markup only if it's the loan and I would still say, and gap insurance companies are likely to catch on to this at some point and say, nah man, we're not gonna participate in that. That's a little way outside of what we thought we were gonna to have to cover. Nonetheless, whether you buy a new car or and get with a markup or not, you should absolutely get gap insurance, but ask your current insurance company if they offer it, because it'll be a lot cheaper through them. And do your research on what it costs to get it put on your car, and that will help protect you at least to not get screwed on your loan balance, because nothing's worse than losing your whole entire markup that you paid in cash, and now you have to come out of your pocket with another 10,000 or $5,000 just to pay off your loan when your car got totaled. So think this through before you go pay those markups and just know you likely will never see that money again. If your car gets stolen or totaled, you are done. That money is gone and that is painful. Now I'll wrap up with this. There are three different ways to insure something. So let's call it a car, your property. One is agreed value. Agreed value, somebody's, somebody's gonna bring this up if I don't bring it up, is when you agree with your insurance company on an actual value of the item you're going to insure. This is likely to cost you more money to get and likely still gonna be almost impossible to get on one of these marked up cars because if you call your insurance company and say, look, I paid 150,000 for this Hellcat, I want you to insure it for $150,000, they still have to agree that the car is worth $150,000 and most likely they're not going to agree with that. But if you can get them to agree to that and you agree that, you know, they agree, you both agree, the appraiser agrees that, okay, we're going to agree that if you total this car, gets a stolen, it's going to be $150,000 you're going to pay me. Good. Then you're, you're protected against that depreciation, instant depreciation from that markup. But most likely you can't do that. But I would ask your insurance company if they offer that option to be able to pay a little more to get covered for what you actually paid for that car. 
ask that question. Don't just insure the car and then hope and pray that it's gonna be covered if something were to happen after you put all that huge money into that markup. And then there's stated value, which is basically what's used for classic cars. And you, you will agree with the insurance company similar to the agreed value on this is what it's worth and we're good if something were to happen. And then there's actual cash value, which is the world the rest of us normal people live in, which is your car is worth what it's worth at the day you you total that thing and they're gonna give you that much money. And if you happen to owe way more, you're gonna be paying that difference yourself. Could you argue with them? Could you negotiate with them? Could you find some other comparables? Yes, could you get a, a, a qualified expert to write a, a letter saying that the car is worth more? Yeah, you could do that, but it's gonna be, you're, you may still just only squeeze a couple thousand dollars more out of the insurance company. Nonetheless, you're still gonna have a big, huge gap problem which would require that gap insurance. So keep in mind, you may wanna get that no matter what, but don't think that that's gonna cover the markup unless the markup was financed, and then I would still ask the gap company, I would call them, not take the dealership's word for it, and make sure that they will cover that entire gap amount, even though it's way above what the car MSRP is. So hopefully this stuff helps you guys. I'll go ahead and switch over to Brad from a few days ago when he picked up the car. We'll reveal the repair on my Dodge Charger and what it costs. And hopefully I never make this stupid mistake again. Look at that, man. I can't even tell it was crashed. Look at that. Which side was it? I'm kidding, dude. <laughs> Look at that. Look like brand new. We replaced the upper grill. We had to replace this guy. Um, replace the bumper, the impact bar, the absorber. Um, and that was about it. Oh, the grill too, right? Yeah, because it says behind it probably snapped it. Well, look at that, dude. Well, I wish it never happened, but you guys did good. All right, well, I appreciate it, man. You guys are the best. You know, I'll see you hopefully not for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> Take care. All right, so I'm probably dressed different than the rest of the video, but that's okay. Just picked up the car and it looks beautiful, looks like brand new, sucks that this happened. Definitely gonna nail my car fax, but the total to fix this thing was $3,684.10, and had I fixed it myself, I could have probably got it done for 2,600 bucks, which was the original estimate, like 23 or 24, because I would have got the headlight from eBay, I would have gotten the grill from eBay, we got the front from eBay, OEM, it's just you pick up stuff that people crashed, right? That that part wasn't damaged and you save a ton of money but um, insurance paid it so uh, my rates will go up and I will be reimbursing them over the next three years in the form of higher rates with USAA um, my overall take with USAA is um, good but it's really weird how when you sign up with people they're the nicest people in the world when you give them your money at the beginning you get a whole different person and then when you file a claim you get somebody on the phone that treats you like you're an utter criminal and you feel wildly uncomfortable the entire time and maybe I was ultra sensitive because of what happened but it's just amazing how that that relationship changes from we love you to now we have to pay out even though you paid us six thousand dollars in the last year now we have to pay out these two claims but they'll probably raise my rates and then they'll make it all back tenfold over the next few years unless I change companies which, uh, depending on what they do to me, that could happen. So my estimates on an increase in premiums, I would expect, you know, it's gonna go up another thousand bucks a year, just knowing them and all the cars and how things are, but we'll see what happens. Maybe more, maybe less. So with that, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this video, learned a lot. And uh, again, please like, subscribe, comment, be respectful, and just thanks for watching. Stay motivated, bye-bye. Perfect. Just like that. So good. Stuff's great.